Hi, just a quick follow-up video on this uh, Goal Zero Yeti 400 uh, power supply. Uh, it's the next day now, and I didn't deliberately didn't leave it um, charging uh, overnight, so it's still at 38% where I left it yesterday. Uh, I just wanted to see if it like had dropped or done anything else, and no, no, it's still good. So I do believe it's actually uh, recovered and it's drawing 11 watts uh, residual from the uh, with the switching inverter, 240 volt uh, inverter on there. Um, so yeah, it looks like it's fine now. Somebody on X um, said, "Oh, I, I should have uh, checked." the um the cell balancing uh voltages in there coming from this uh you know those uh, wires that we saw coming out ah oh, where is it coming out there like that and then they go into this uh ribbon cable harness here um unfortunately um i'm not sure if you can see it but it does go down to that connector that pin connector down in there there it is there that four pin jobby oh but yeah, yeah, there we go. That four pin jobby there. And unfortunately, it is not, I've got a photo, it is not a direct access to the um, batteries. So it's actually an I squared C um, interface. So there you go, ground um, I squared C, um, the clock and data lines, and it just says uh, BMS there. So that's going over to the uh, battery management um, thing on that uh, board. So it looks like it is happening on that board, or maybe it's controlled via, oh, my bloody tripod keeps falling down. Um, it's not tight enough, so it, if I don't do it tight enough, it just slowly drifts, slowly drifts down like that. <laughs> I've done a few recent videos, this is not my main uh, tripod that I use in the uh, lab. It's still a good man Frodo jobby, um, I just have to do it up tighter, that's what she said. Anyway, um, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, I can't do that, get access to uh, the battery cells. I'd have to like take off all this, um, like take apart the, it looks like I'd have to take apart the entire uh, plate and everything, get the inverter out, take off uh, the plate. It looks like it's got some uh, embedded nuts there and yeah, have to take the whole thing apart to access presumably a little uh, battery, battery management slash uh, protection board under there, unfortunately. So yeah, so much for that. Uh, nope, that wasn't uh, possible to test that. But yes, you know, probably if you uh, encounter an under, like a voltage, like an under voltage uh, thing on your battery, then if you have access to the individual uh, cells, or not the individual, because there's multiple cells in uh, series, um, sorry, in, in parallel in here, and there's four, uh, four in series, because it's a 12.8 volt uh, pack. So they've put uh, four in, there's four str parallel strings um, in series in this thing. And uh, the battery management system will be tapping off each one of those um, strings just to balance the uh, the multiple cells in uh, series. So um, yeah, unfortunately we don't have access to that uh, easily. So yeah, so much for that. But anyway, I do believe that the uh, under voltage lockout on the battery protection thing, which is under here, directly on the battery, that actually saved this thing. I don't think there's any damage uh, done to this. So I could actually, you know, fully charge it, then I can test its capacity and everything and stuff like that. That'll, that'll uh, take a while, I could do that. Not sure if I'll bother, but um, yeah, anyway, unfortunately, uh, yes, charging this thing, like I had this floating at 100%, unfortunately there's no way to actually set a lower, like, you know, set it to 80% to preserve the longevity of the battery. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's no ability to do that. So if you're going to float this thing and leave it, um, you know, permanently charged up so it's ready to go, it's always going to be at um, 100%, unfortunately. So yeah, that's a bit of a bummer. Um, but anyway, there you go. That was a quick follow-up. Catch you next time.